Throw three darts at the map. Toss in three wildly distinctive personalities. I can make anything out of polymer clay. Plus three clever projects. And you've got a craft show that'll have you saying, that's clever. I'm Angela Mabry, and I'm from Yukon, Oklahoma. I love crafting. My favorite material to work with is polymer clay. I can make anything out of polymer clay. And today, I'm going to make this mailbox desk set. To get started, I've got to go to my workspace. Welcome to my workspace. This is where I do my polymer clay work. First thing I'm going to do for my mailbox desk set is condition my green clay and roll it through the pasta machine. I'm going to cut my base out of this. I'm using a needle tool to cut a freehand, kind of a curvy shape. My base sheet is laid out and now I'm going to start on the textured top part. My plastic texture sheet here kind of has some raised imprints, look like grass. First, I'm going to spray it with water to make sure the clay doesn't stick. And now I'm going to use my acrylic brayer to roll the texture into the clay. It's just like a rolling pin. Peel that back, and I've got texture. Now I'm going to add some packing peanuts to create some hills. These are bake friendly. I rolled out a green clay snake that I'm going to press along the back so that I have a place to put my fence. That'll add some stability. This is a green ball of clay, and I'm going to put that right there to press my pin into later. I'm going to drape this textured sheet on top to create my grass. Now I'm going to use my needle tool, and I'm going to trace around the outside. The groundwork is laid, and now I'm going to move on to the fence. I've laid out my sheet of white clay, and now I'm going to use my fence post template to cut out my fence posts. Once I have those all laid out, I'll add a little liquid polymer clay that acts as a glue to hold the pieces of clay together. And now it's ready to go into the oven for 30 minutes at 275 degrees. These pieces have been baked for 30 minutes, and now I'm going to press them into the grassy knoll. My fence is securely in place. This grass is all fine and good, but it needs a little color. I'm gonna add some flowers. I'm making a lot of flowers, so I'm going to use my flower mold. It's flexible, so I can just pop the clay out. I always spray my mold with water first to make sure the clay doesn't stick. And now I'll pop out my flower. And now I'll make one in pink. I have two flowers done, but I know what'll help them grow faster. Grow, flowers, grow! Flower power. The fence is done, the flowers look great. Now I'm gonna start on my flower pot. I'm gonna use a miniature flower pot, and I wanna make an impression in the clay so it'll sit flat once it's baked. I'm also going to press my pin into the ball that I put under the clay. I'm going to use my miniature flower pot and set it down to gauge the size of the lid. I'm going to add leaves and flowers. The leaves are made the same way as the flowers with a rubber mold. I'm done adding flowers. Now I'm going to add holes in the edges for my handle. I've made the fence, I've made the grass, I've made the flower pot. Now I need to make my pin. 
I'm going to start with some brown clay. Now I'm going to take out the parts of this pin that aren't going to be safe in the oven. I'm going to spread liquid polymer clay on the pin to make it stick. And since I want my barrel to be a little squared, like a post for the mailbox, I'm going to press it down on each edge. I'm also going to add a little weathered wood texture with my needle tool. I'm done covering the barrel of the pin. Now I'm going to add the mailbox. I use silver clay and I roll it into a mailbox shape. My mailbox piece is complete. Now I need to add it back to the pin barrel. I'm ready to bake this along with my fence post, my grass, and everything else. These pieces have baked for 30 minutes. Now I'm going to add a wire handle to my flower pot top. And reassemble my pin. My dust set is complete. And now the grass will always be greener on my side of the fence. Up next, Angela's back in her Oklahoma studio. She's coming full circle with the design for polymer clay that's the center of attention on any poker table. The stakes are high when we return to Yukon, Oklahoma. Angela's great idea for a polymer clay coaster always makes for a safe bet. I'm back, and now I'm going to make my poker chip coaster. To get started on my coaster, I'm going to take my polymer clay and roll it through the pasta machine. My clay is rolled out. Now I'm going to use the tin plate I've already cut out and cut around it with my needle tool. Now that this is cut out, I'm going to bake it in my toaster oven for 30 minutes at 275 degrees. The bottom is baked. Now I'm going to do the same thing to make the top piece. I'm going to use liquid polymer clay to attach this piece to the baked piece. And I just put it around the edge because I'm going to take out the center area. I'm going to take a smaller circle template to cut out the middle because that's where the drink goes. I'm going to use my scraper to take out the center. I'll set that aside for later. I'm going to use my needle tool to make impressions around the outside to make it look like a poker chip. The idea for the poker chip poster actually came from my husband. He wanted a handy place to put his drink while he played poker. I've made the impressions all the way around, and now I'm going to add back the center part, but I'm going to texture it first to make it look more like a poker chip. My center piece is applied and now I'm going to bake it in the toaster oven, 30 minutes, 275 degrees. This has been baked, and now I'm going to make it into a coaster by adding cork to the back. I got this at the craft store, and it fits perfectly on my poker chip. I'm going to take my industrial strength glue and apply it to the back of my cork, press it onto the coaster. This piece is right for 30 minutes. I've got a poker chip coaster and an excellent place to put my drinks. Take a look around. You might find a talented crafter right next door. They're everywhere, and we just showed you three. Join us again next time and see what else America's crafting on That's Clever.